Hello everyone and welcome to our short introduction to the marketing module at the PwC's uh, Mini MBA Academy. My name is Laza Jamic and I'm uh, talking to the attendees uh, for this particular module of the Academy about marketing in the digital age, which is actually all about marketing as a management function. Um, how it evolved into today's times, what it means, uh, what are the things that we need to be mindful of in this new world, which is now our world, the only one that we have, and basically what are the old marketing practices are still valid and still applicable, and what are the new things that we need to be able to introduce and recognize in the first place in order to make for and contribute to to a more successful business. Now, one of the things that we cover uh, during the marketing module is uh, our talk and examples about brands and branding, uh, what uh, that means, how brands, again, has evolved into the digital age, and uh, in what ways we can actually approach uh, uh, developing a successful brand for any organization. Now, one of the things that I'm like talk about that is a notion uh, of mental availability uh, that was kind of introduced to the marketing in the business world uh, about 10 years ago by Professor Byron Sharp in his book How Brands Grow. This particular book is now the bible for many marketing managers and directors in developed countries, particularly in the FMCG sector. But I found that Professor Byron Sharp and his work is not so familiar to a lot of people outside of the Anglo-Saxon countries. And that's why I kind of like talking about it a little bit more, introducing people to his work. And basically, uh, Professor Sharp, uh, who is one of the le world's leading authorities for brand strategy, brand management strategy, uh, actually has two notions in the book. One is that uh, companies grow and brands grow. Uh, in his book, uh, in only two ways. One is by achieving bigger physical availability, which means being easier to buy, either by being physically more present around the consumers, meaning everywhere, uh, or online by being easily discovered and then uh, having a great user experience, which means that they're quite easy to buy, literally easy to buy. But the other concept is mental availability, which means that those brands, successful brands, brands who are growing, actually also has a sort of a bigger space in the heads and the hearts of their audiences. Uh, and usually that comes from being frequently um, uh, advertised, being uh, everywhere in the media space, but also having a stronger brand presence, having a more clearly defined brand. And one of the big aspects of having a clearly defined brand, there's lots of different things we can do for that, is um, a brand archetype. Now, I like talking about brand archetypes. A, they are fun to discuss and to talk about. A lot of people don't know about this particular approach. And the third reason is that a lot of brands are actually actively and almost religiously uh, developing and supporting and building their brand archetypes. And that's one part of what makes them successful. Now, archetypal branding comes from archetypal storytelling it's a kind of bigger story behind uh, the approach and the marketing people and the brand people have realized very quickly that there's something for them in it as well so um, uh, very often uh, archetypal brands are discussed through different wheels of archetypes and this is one of the most frequently used one and the book that talks about it is on the right hand side so i strongly kind of suggest that you you check it out and as you can see, um, there are some uh, archetypal personalities that brands may occupy or that they may deploy. Now, I very often ask the participants in the module, uh, which particular archetype do you think Google would be fitting in? And um, usually, almost in 100% of situations, usually I get three answers. Either magician, which means things happen almost like magic. Uh, sage, a wise person, because Google knows everything or um, Explorer, which means Google usually takes you to explore, it's the starting point to explore anything under the sun. So as you can see, uh, there's kind of a clear uh, focus of energies into one part of the spectrum. Then I may ask the participants, oh, tell me now about Apple. And usually people are uh, most, again, most often they're mentioning creator, 
sometimes explorer, but usually a creator as being uh, the archetype, which is almost 100% uh, 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 fit with the uh, Apple's official positioning make, making, uh, uh, making tools for creative people. Uh, but also some, some, some of the people with longer memories uh, will remember that Apple started as an outlaw, as a, as a rebel against the IBM and the mainframe computers when they launched the Macintosh. And that was the archetype that they've occupied for a number of years until they became mainstream and they actually they had to find uh, a, different, a different archetype in this particular case, it's a creator. And then we play with it and we debate it. And for example, I asked them, okay, uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson or Always or some other kind of similar brands, everybody says, oh, caregivers, obviously. Uh, ben & Jerry's, Jester, uh, Alfa Romeo, interestingly enough, many people put it into a lover and things like that. So uh, we play with archetypes, we explore archetypes, and then we also talk about their own companies and say, okay, do you have an archetype? Well, usually we don't. Uh, have you ever thought about it? Usually we didn't. And uh, the whole exercise of actually started thinking about it helped a lot of companies to actually organize and understand in the first place who they are, what they are, and then a lot of other things come out of that, the tonality, the tone of voice, the way that they, they present themselves, the, they, the way that they behave, and many other things. So uh, archetypes are really, really fun thing an incredibly useful thing to play with and one of the shortest ways to actually define what this brand is all about and what to do about it. Uh, now this is an example of how different brands fit into that continuum of different archetypes. You can clearly see that some of the brands just sit in a, in a very, very particular um, uh, energetic field that actually we define them by and we feel them by and we say well this brand is definitely sort of a magician or an outlaw a rebel definitely it's not a mainstream every every man uh, of a sort and again that's a really interesting dis uh, debate and discussion and here's an example that i also give in the session and again the example is taken uh, from professor sharp's book how brands grow uh, one of the archetypal brands that we most of us know of is Harley Davidson, and they are firmly, for decades now, sitting in the archetype of um, a, a rebel, of an outlaw. And this is how we very often imagine in our heads the archetypal or the typical user and customer of the company. Now, when you look, as Professor Sharp uh, uh, is mentioning, uh, when you look at their mission, uh, their brand purpose, actually, they do not talk about bikes. They don't talk about making the best bikes in the world, the most technologically advanced bikes in the world, and or anything like that. They say we fulfill dreams through the experience of motorcycling. So that's what the brand does. The company is doing something else. Now, the question is, this is a very strong, very clear, very identifiable archetype. Is the company story, do the customers who actually buy those bikes are the guys like, or usually the guys like, like this. And then the data actually shows something else. That 50% of revenue from 40% of owners come from people who mostly keep the bike parked. They wear a helmet when driving, don't know a lot of other bike owners, and least agree with the statement, my bike is the most important thing in my life. While when we look at the typical uh, uh, archetypal Harley Davidson image, only three and a half percent of revenue comes from 10% of owners who earn the least, mostly don't buy a new Harley Davidson, spend the most on accessories, most likely to drink beer and have tattoos and kind of, they say, don't read books. So sort of kind of guys that we would imagine on this picture as well. Now that's a different difference between a company and an archetype. The company sells dreams, not the product, and the product is only a ticket for the dreams, but they are nurturing, incredibly carefully and consistently nurturing this archetype of a rebel and an outlaw because dreams are one of the most precious but also the most expensive things that we want in our lives so that's it a very short introduction a very short uh, um, uh, peek into the marketing module uh, for the academy uh, there's a lot of other things that we discussed during this particular session we talk about the evolution of marketing we talk about uh, marketing strategies and plans yes we do talk about uh, some digital stuff and crm and many other things how to use data um, just uh, in order to actually answer this big question what is marketing 
because marketing is one of the most misunderstood disciplines in modern business. And the purpose of this module in the Academy is to really shed light on what it really is and how it drives business. I hope this was interesting to you and please do get in touch with your nearest PwC Academy representative and book your space for the next Academy in your country because it's well worth the time. All the best.